Hi everyone! So a few weeks ago I posted a video revealing the project that I've been working on in collaboration with Inktober and Viviva. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will have a link to it here somewhere. I was part of creating a postcard coloring set for Inktober. So this was made to encourage people, especially beginners, to be more creative and to participate in Inktober this year. There are 31 pre-made designs, one for each Inktober prompt made by six different artists, including Jake Parker, the creator of Inktober. I have five different designs in here, and if you think it looks interesting, there will be a link in the description box below where you can get these, and you will actually be coloring one of my designs the first day of Inktober. Very exciting. There are so many different styles in here. I am so proud of what we have created here, and I'm really excited to see people coloring this. Each of the postcard sets will come with one of these Inktober 2021 special edition coloring sheets with a bunch of lovely autumn colors and also a few pastel colors and it smells like pumpkin spice. Anyway, let's take a closer look at these products as I promised you in my previous video, the Viviva Inktober sketchbooks and also the brand new Viviva watercolor pans that I'm so excited to try out. But yeah, we have these guys. I love square sketchbooks and this is ivory, 240 GSM hot pressed paper. And this one is size A5 or landscape, 100% cotton, 300 GSM, cold pressed. And the paper in both of these sketchbooks are very, very smooth and thick. These sketchbooks are also made to lay flat. I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but the ivory sketchbook got a slightly more yellowish tone to it. It is very subtle though. Then we have this guy. It is the Viviva watercolors as pants. So we have a little color swatch card. Ah, and a little bonus mixing tray. And here we have the paints. The pants aren't super deep, but having worked with the Viviva paints before, I know how pigmented they are, and a little paint really goes a long way. Also, it's made out of cork, which I have never seen before. So it is super lightweight, it is super thin, probably much more eco-friendly than just a regular plastic case. But yeah, we got 16 different colors. Let's swatch it. So my first impression about these paints, like with all the Viviva paints that I've tried, they are bright and pigmented. They feel a little thicker than the paints from the color sheet, almost like the Kuretake Gansai Tambi paints that has a bit of a gouache-like quality to them. I like the color selection too. The only thing that I miss though, maybe a darker tone, like a grayish blue, paints gray kind of color that can be mixed with the other colors to get darker tones. I would actually prefer that over the white paint, but that is just my personal preferences. But again, I like the paints and the variety in colors. I did make the swatches in both sketchbooks too, just to get an idea how the paints looks on the different papers before I started painting. I started in the square ivory sketchbook. Also, the two paper types, ivory and cotton, are available for both sizes of sketchbooks, so you can combine them however you like to. But yeah, I just wanted to make something cute and play around with the paint, so I made a little kitty, of course, with a bunch of flowers. This is one of these art pieces where I just love how the sketch turned out. It is so adorable. The paper was actually pretty nice to draw on with just a pencil, since the paper is so smooth it felt very satisfying. Something that I discovered when doing a little reading about the sketchbooks and their different qualities, apparently the ivory paper is imported from Sweden. It says Lesebo paper on the sketchbook sleeve, or Lesebo, I suppose it's pronounced, which is actually a small place here in Sweden that is known for their paper mills, and I think that might be where it's from. So it came all the way back to Sweden again. And this paper is ideal for inking, 
sketching and light painting, so not ideal for heavy watercoloring really. I usually like to do a lot of wet on wet technique, which I do on more textured watercolor paper. I like to add a lot of water and let the paint mix in it, but I couldn't really do that here because of the paper, but I didn't really mind to be honest. The smooth texture made it feel like painting on Bristol board, which I do enjoy quite a bit and I like the effect that it gives. It almost gives it a marker art kind of look. I think the paper held up pretty well though, even if it did buckle a little where I had added a little more water, but overall it stayed quite flat. So if you're only doing very light watercoloring, I think this will work just fine. Afterwards, I added line work with a pencil pocket brush pen. Using an ink pen on this paper worked so well since there is no texture, the lines turns out so smooth. I really like how this piece turned out too. I like the earthy but colorful tones and the sketchy style. I think this ivory paper will be perfect for Inktober if you're planning to work more with ink pens or maybe lighter ink washes or just pencils, color pencils, graphite pencils. It was very nice to draw on, but yeah, I hope you like this piece. So moving on to the A5 sketchbook and the cotton paper, and this one is especially made for watercolors. I made another little flower kitty, and for this one I added a lot more water, and I could really tell that this paper could take the paint a lot better. While the paint kind of sat on top of the ivory paper, it seems like the cotton paper absorbs the water a lot better. I also noticed that even if I used more water in this piece, the paper didn't buckle as much, almost nothing at all actually, it stayed quite flat the whole time. And for both of these kitty paintings, I used a very loose style. I like when watercolor pieces looks a little casual, kind of, a little sketchy, if you can call paint sketchy, but anyway. I think it fits the sketchbooks too, I suppose. But I really like how the paint looks on this paper, and even if both paper types are very smooth, with no visual texture at all, I do prefer the texture that the paint gets on this cotton paper. It isn't super visible or anything, but I just think the paint looks a little better with this paper. Personally, I would have liked a little more texture, but I definitely see the charm of working on smoother paper too. I mentioned earlier when swatching the paints that I missed having a darker color to mix darker tones with, and I wanted this kitty to have a darker grayish color, so I mixed one of the blues with a wine red burgundy color, and I got this bluish gray color, which I really liked, and that is one of the fine things with watercolors, you can basically mix all the colors that you like, and I really liked painting with this new Viviva pan set. It has a bit of a minimalistic vibe to it with a cork and all, which I think inspired the more sketchy minimalistic art pieces. The ink pen worked really well on this paper too, so if you like to use more watercolors or liquid ink or ink washes for Inktober or just in general, I can really recommend this paper. It feels durable and holds up wet medium really well. Also, if you can get your hands on the Viviva watercolor pans, I can really recommend those too. I think they might be sold out at the moment when making this video, but they might get restocked, so keep an eye out for them. But yeah, here you have the Viviva Inktober 2021 sketchbooks and the Viviva watercolor pans. If you like them, there is a link in the description box below. Also, don't forget to check out the postcard set. There are only a few left, so make sure to grab one before they're gone forever. Thanks Viviva for the art supplies and thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats. Bye!